welcome to morning prayer for Friday the 14th of August. Our prayer begins today on page 173. Um, the reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 36 to the end. The psalm is Psalm 51, which you'll find on page two, 722. And our prayers you'll find on page 376. This morning, uh, or today, is the day that the Church of England commemorates Maximilian Kobe. He's a Franciscan friar and a 21st, 20th century martyr who died in Auschwitz on this day in 1941. He is uh, revered as a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. He was born near Lodz in Poland and he experienced a vision of the Virgin Mary in 1906 which led to him becoming a Franciscan friar in 1910. He was sent to study in Rome where he was ordained priest in 1918 and uh, later that year he returned to Poland uh, suffering from ill health and he taught in a seminary in Krakow. Maximilian was instrumental in forming a religious community near Warsaw in 1927, which started with 18 friars and by 1939 had 650, making it the largest Catholic religious house in the world at that particular time. The friars published countless devotional tracts a daily newspaper with a circulation of 230,000 and a monthly magazine with a circulation of over a million. Maximilian was even, even started a shortwave radio station and he had planned to do, have a film studio. And all of this was to counter the secularisation of society as they saw it at the time. In 1930, he and four companions went to Japan, where they established a friary in Nagasaki. He wanted to do more, but his health failed and he had to return to Poland. Following the German invasion of Poland in 1939, the friars were imprisoned, but then they were unexpectedly released and they were allowed to work with the refugees. Maximilian, though, continued to be outspoken and was imprisoned again, this time in Auschwitz, where he ministered to his fellow inmates. Death came to him when he volunteered, volunteered to take the place of another prisoner who had been condemned to die a slow death in a starvation bunker. Maximilian took his place. But eventually this, the Nazi captors ended his life with a fatal injection on the 14th of August 1941 at the age of 47. I'm not quite sure when he was um, beatified by the Roman Catholic Church but he is recognised as a saint by them. So to our prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and be glad with him in psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and, in his, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. 
as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our psalm, as I said, is Psalm 51, which you find on page 722. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. I have been wicked even from my birth, a sinner when my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth deep within me and shall make me understand wisdom in the depths of my heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my misdeeds. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you desire no sacrifice, else I would give it. You take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. O be favourable and gracious to Zion, build up the walls of Jerusalem, then you will accept sacrifices in righteousness, the burnt offerings and oblations, then they shall offer up bulls to your altar. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. Let's pray. Take away, good Lord, the sin that corrupts us. Give us the sorrow that heals and the joy that praises. And restore by grace your own image within us, that we may take our place among your people in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the scripture reading, as I said, is from Acts chapter 2. I'm going to start actually at verse 36 rather than 37 because it makes a little bit more sense. Um, this is a passage which comes after the passage where Peter has addressed the people of Jerusalem after Pentecost or at Pentecost. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord God will call. With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptised and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and in prayer and to prayer. 
Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's some echoes there then of the work of Maximilian Kobe in um, sharing the gospel and asking people to come to repent and come to God. Similarly, from the Psalms, there were those echoes of calling people to repent and to come to God. And also Peter was again speaking out against the secularization or the of that community and um, just as Maximilian was speaking out against the secularization of the community in his time. And I hope you noticed from the psalm, I hope that there were some passages that we are quite familiar with, like um, verse 16, where it says, O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. And then verse 18, the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. And verse 11, make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. All those quotations, all those little sections are used in various places in our liturgies. So you see, most of the liturgy actually comes from the Bible itself. It's not just something somebody's made up. It's all there in the Bible, pretty much. So, forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And the Benedictus. The Song of Zechariah. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Give to your people knowledge of salvation, O God by the forgiveness of their sins. And our prayers then on page 376. Let us by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving make requests to our God. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men.
women and children. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith and love and service. We pray for Stephen and Dagmar, our bishops, and for the life of this benefice. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of the sacraments, and the fellowship of your people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for this local community, or these local communities, and for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly, for families and all who are alone. We give thanks for human skill and creativity and all that reveals your loveliness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, the sorrowful and the bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort and care and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. And our collect for today. Gracious Father, re revive your church in our day and make her holy and strong and faithful for your glory's sake. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as Jesus has taught us, we pray the Lord's Prayer in your preferred words or version. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today. It's been lovely to have you and I hope I will see you, all of you, at some stage soon. And do have a good weekend. Stay safe. God bless you.